Welcome everybody. We're ready to get started on our webinar. I'm Brenna Nath. I'm the HW Plus Managing Editor here at Housing Wire. And for our topic today, we're speaking on life after the loan, the lifetime value of borrower retention sponsored by Sales Boomerang and Total Expert. A few quick housekeeping items that we want to go over before jumping in. First, we will be having a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Feel free to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen to submit your questions. And then also we will be recording this webinar and sending a recording of the webinar to all registrants within 24 hours of it. So be sure to check your emails for that. So with that, I'm happy to introduce our two experts that we have on the webinar today. First, we have Joe Weilu, who is the founder and CEO of Total Expert, which started in 2012 in the basement of a real estate office. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 2019 and Total Expert now serves 125 enterprise clients after growing its customer base more than eight times since 2017. Those customers include nine of the top 15 lenders and two of the top five banks nationally. The Minneapolis-based company last year ranked among the fastest growing private U.S. companies and among the 15 fastest growing software companies in the country and is backed by some of the leading venture capital firms in Silicon Valley. We're also joined by Alex Kuchishin, who is founder, CEO, and chief ROI booster with Sales Boomerang. As an innovator and entrepreneur, he consulted for one of the mortgage industry's best marketing companies, which is where he got the idea for his new venture, Sales Boomerang, the first fully automated borrow intelligence software that tells lenders when a prospect or past customer is ready for a loan. In less than three years, they have discovered more than $20 billion in missed loan volume for more than 90 of the top lenders in the industry. In the same period, Sales Boomerang has made sure their customers don't make the same mistakes and miss opportunity to help their borrowers to date. And Sales Boomerang customers have originated nearly $10 billion in deals from their own database. So with that, we're excited to dive into this important topic. So I'll go ahead and kick it off to Alex. Wonderful, thanks. Thanks so much, Brandon. And um, Joe, cheers to you, man. Wonderful, hey. I, love, I love hearing that success story and, 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 and your story in general. Good, good to um, be with you, my friend, likewise. Right back at you. Um, uh, we're fired up, guys. We're fired up to, to be speaking with you all and, and sharing this and really, uh, I'm going to kick it off to you, Joe. I know, I know yeah. you had some things you want to start and, and, and share. So why don't we jump into that and, and we'll go from, from you and then we'll move into the, the full presentation. Yeah. So talking about life after the loan and really what we're talking about is customer loyalty. Okay. And uh, it, it's not something traditionally in our industry that necessarily gets the lion's share of focus. Mm. Um, mortgage and lending have uh, had an incredibly important time over this past few months, really this entire year, as rates have, have been at unprecedented lows. And really housing, in, in my mind, uh, in the lending world, leading the economy out, out of the recession and really into uh, this next chapter here as we, we get out of the, the post-COVID and into reopening the economy everywhere. Home ownership's never been hotter than it was, uh, mm -hmm. than it is right now. Uh, we're never, we've never seen more refinance activity than we have. And so to go back to a conversation you and I have had uh, lately is what as lenders do you do with the tremendous op opportunity and really responsibility that you have with all these borrowers? And in our minds, Alex, you and I uh, agree on, it, it, it ultimately comes down to how can you position yourself as a lifelong financial partner yep. to these consumers? Help them make better financial decisions, um, just be a, a more relevant uh, communicator in how you engage with them and just add tremendous value, not just today during the transaction, but set the stage to do that moving forward. And, Obviously, yeah. would would love your comments as well as yeah, no doubt. You and I again, you and I spent so much time talking about this over the last couple of weeks, and it's you know, and, and specifically because of the title of this of this presentation, life after the loan. Right now, every lender is being flooded with all these opportunities, and so you have a lot of a lot of homeowners that are making decisions quickly, and it's it's what happens from here moving forward. But not just in this instance, right? Not just in this instance. This is a lifelong. Uh, journey in general. This has been happening before COVID. It's going to happen after COVID. But this particular situation allows us to speak about this today because it's such an enormous amount of, of opportunity that has landed inside our databases that have come in front of us, existing customers, new customers. It's, it's, it's all happening right now. And so it is, this is the time 
and, and I think you and I spoke about this too, and we don't have the quote in here, but you were talking about Anthony Shea talking about how he's not thinking about today. He's thinking about six to 12 months from now. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we know their success story. So um, it's, it's, it's really key that we're having this dialogue at this very moment because this is, this is unprecedented, the amount of volume and right. the changes that are happening. So, yeah. And we see two types of companies, right? And, and you see the type of company that is saying, okay, this is great. Let's take advantage of this opportunity. But more importantly, what does a year from now look like, two years from now look like, and how do we position our organization, not take our eye off the ball long term, and yeah. how do we position our organization so that we are going to win market share and take advantage uh, of this influx uh, of a demand really for for mortgage and then you've got the other type of organization that is somewhat just so inundated with delivery and fulfillment uh, of the the inbound stuff they're like hey i we can hardly keep our hand, head above water we're not really thinking about what's next we're just trying to get through today so you see really two different types of companies and i know you and i both talk to a lot of uh, a lot of organizations in the industry uh, at all different levels. And that's been really clear to me. And uh, what's exciting is I think there are a lot of organizations that are in that first camp. They're saying, hey, uh, yes, we're thankful to play such an important role right now uh, in the economy uh, as, a, as a, a helpful resource to homeowners and yeah. people wanting to purchase that first home. Uh, what we've seen in many markets is this huge renewed interest in moving into homes, really having a yard, Absolutely. right? So you're seeing all these crazy dynamics. And I think it's just important to, to recognize those things, but then also saying, what can we do as a company today uh, to set the stage so that uh, we're gonna be in a better position tomorrow? And so this next slide is, is one of my favorites that you've uh, put together. I, I think it's great. And it really tells the story of what's at stake yeah. for so many lenders and I'll let you talk through it. Yeah, no, so this was the, so look, this is news to us, right? We're all learning uh, things about our, our, our business, right? It, it's constantly evolving. And one of the things that we discovered over the last uh, 12 months or so is exactly how many mortgage related transactions a consumer will have that lives in the United States, right? So if you're a human being and you live in the United States, you will on average have 11 mortgage related transactions. Right. So things will happen after this transaction. Right. And so this is all the different things that can from the first purchase to everything else. These are the types of transactions that are happening and they will happen. And this is what we've discovered with with looking at all these databases is that a database is far more active than anyone thinks. And often you have one or two transactions. So you have some of the top producers. Um, and I know we we're trying to find this exact quote. But remember, you and I talked about this, Joe, um, that that top producers in the mortgage industry, they'll attribute 65% of their business to repeat. But yeah. for some reason, the overall numbers in the mortgage industry are just 15%, which we're going to get to the stat towards, towards the end of this presentation too, but just 15% retention versus the top producers at 65. And so here's, here's a view of what we just, the, 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 that half circle with all the events that could happen, the mortgage related events from the purchase to the HELOC, to the refi, to the cash out, to another purchase, all that good stuff. Here's a better way to visualize it, right? And this is what happens today, right? And we talked about this, Joe, in 2010 right there, you sold somebody a home, right? So you may have worked with a realtor, so a realtor got a deal and you got a deal. And then it becomes this, you know, we talk about in technology world, we talk blue ocean a lot, right? But that's what happens for the, for the, for the borrower. It's a blue ocean. It's like, yeah. I can go anywhere I want, you know, and I don't know when I should get there or what I should do. And nobody's really set me up for what happens next. So guess what? In 2013, the big banks that have a lot more money than me have marketed to this, to this borrower that I brought to the market and now they're doing their refi and yeah. I lost it. And then 2018, I buy another house. And then 2020, right? I'm refining. Everyone's refining. But, and a lot of what we're sharing today and what we're going to go into today is, is what we've both learned and both our organizations have learned around the number one, the importance of having a plan, okay, yes. uh, around loyalty and retention. If you don't have a plan, you, you plan to fail is, is the old saying, and I think it really applies here. So what is your strategic plan, action plan as an organization? to make sure that you maximize uh, loyalty and retention. 
And yes. because it truly is one of those things that compounds over time. And it is the Achilles heel for so many organizations. And if you talk about, you think about profitability and, and uh, you know, how, how do we, how do you control profitability long term? Well, if you're not worrying about acquiring new customers all the time because you have such a loyal base and you've done such a great job at being that advisor, that financial partner to that consumer, and, and then breaking that down and saying, well, why, why? How have you done that? You've been really uh, proactive about leveraging the data that you know about your customer to communicate with them about education-centric topics and things that are relevant and anticipating uh, when it might be important or helpful for them to do that next transaction. And so uh, I think these slides that you guys did here uh, are a beautiful example of that, that lost opportunity and, and how it transpires. And let's move on to the next one here. Yes, so, so from Joe's point, right? How do you go from this to this? How do you it get to here? Education, it takes loyalty, it takes technology, it takes automation. And Joe, I, love, I, you, I want you to share this with everyone because you mentioned this, which made us put this next slide in, right? It's again, so, so just to keep everyone in order, you go from doing only one deal in, in eight years or, or 10 years to doing four deals in 10 years if you properly educate. And Joe has an entire uh, belief system around knowledge. And I agree, and we use Tim Liven, Liven's uh, quote here, that yeah. humans crave knowledge. And when that craving ends, we're no longer human. And, and, and share with us, Joe, because you have a real deep connection. With yeah, one of, our, one of our specific themes and one of our core theses on how to build incredible loyalty. Number one, if you think about um, your, the loyalty customers have with you is going to be influenced heavily and really dictated by the experience holistically that they have. The quality of that experience is either going to create trust or, or it's going to erode trust. Okay. And the level of trust they have in you and your brand uh, is going to dictate that loyalty. So if I think about it, I've got to step way back. It's not just staying in front of the customer after the transaction. We're going to talk about that and we're going to show how you use data and all of those things. But it really starts at the very beginning of the relationship as well. So it starts before you've even done a before you've ever done a transaction. It starts with how are you engaging with them? Are you marketing a product and service? Are you selling, quote unquote? Are you mm. throwing a, an offer to transact a, or a rate in front of them? Or are you adding some value with education-centric content? And I'll give you an example. Uh, the house, a mortgage, for many people, it's the biggest financial decision that they're gonna make in, in that period of time for most consumers. And so are you helping them understand it better, uh, giving them a better view of what it actually looks like for them long term? So these are all things that go into that theme of educate, never sell, right? And I, I think ultimately to get to true loyalty, you have to look at the whole journey and, and look at how you're engaging with customers. And it, it's not just about drip campaigns and data triggers and things like that. It, it goes a little bit deeper. And that's why uh, I, I had mentioned putting this in here because I think it's so important to understand what really can uh, propel a customer to start having that deeper level of trust with you. And we've seen it time and time again from looking at the types of content and things uh, people are sending out what resonates right what moves the needle and so that that was where we we came up with uh, saying hey maybe we should put this slide in so I know we're going to do a quick poll here before we get into some of the meat uh, of what we're going to talk about today and I'll let you tee that up yeah so so here it comes right have you built a a retention and loyalty strategy into your business um, answer those questions uh, I think we're going to take about a minute or so so jump in there let us know you're there Right. Make sure you're communicating. By the way, throw a thing in chat anytime you want. Let us know that you're here. Let us know if you're having a sip of anything while you're watching us talk. Right. Um, <laughs> you're at home. We're at home. We're allowed to do this. It's two o'clock where is I am. It, is it happy hour already in, it is. Uh, in Maryland? It's, it's always happy hour All here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> at least for these conversations, Joe. OK. Always happy right. hour. I'm going to answer this, too, by the way. Um, you know, it popped up on my screen. So I'm going to I'm going to vote, too. Yeah. And I'll say. I think obviously this is this is such a relevant topic for any business. I think what we've learned, in fact, I know what we've learned 
from watching things unfold over the past few months, what we've been through is how deeply you connect with your customers in any business is so critically important. And yeah. if, if I'm running an organization in, in lending and we're doing this for our own company, and I'm sure you are as well, is really answering this question honestly and saying, yeah. oh, sure, we have, uh, we have content that's sent out to people and we're, we're touching them uh, multiple times a year. Well, that's not really a strategy. That's a tactic, yep. right? And so I think when we talk about this, do you have a strategy which encompasses uh, when you reach out with phone calls and text messages and that, that human engagement, as well as how do you combine the human engagement with uh, the, the content and the automation and the tech-enabled things, which are, which are critically important, by the way, but how do you combine those things and, and have an overall strategy? And, and what's interesting, Joe, we got the poll results back and, and this is great. We have a wonderful audience here that is 52% of you said you are on your way. You're on your way to building a strategy, which makes sense why you're sitting here at this, in this, in this webinar today, yeah. learning this because you're on your way. Some of you haven't started. Some of you said they're crushing it. 26%, 4% of you want to know what retention and loyalty is. You're funny. <laughs> um, so let's, let's go. Let's, let's, let's now let's give them. Yeah, let's dig in here. So, uh, as you guys see the agenda here, right? We're going to get into communicating and engaging with customers. Then we're going to drive into in, next into driving tech. So, Joe, uh, yeah, let's part dive in. part one. So, setting the stage, as I mentioned, if you truly want to have amazing customer loyalty and you want to have those customers that become advocates, and you're you're really going to own the relationship, uh, have a lifelong relationship with the customer, you have to have a holistic view and holistic strategy of the entire customer journey. And so uh, the word customer experience gets thrown around a lot. And a lot of people think it's having, it's having a better online app, which it, it does include that. It's having a, an e-closing process. It's having all of the things that make it convenient to do business with your organization, which is all true. But in addition to that, it's also how you communicate with them, how you yeah. present your brand, the type of content you're sending, the context that that content has when you're communicating. Your timing, are you relevant? And so we have what we call an experience and engagement methodology. And we've also called this the, uh, the TE flywheel because we believe that it never really stops. So you not only have to attract consumers uh, as prospects before they ever become a customer, but you have to continue to reattract them uh, throughout the entire life cycle. And a lot of organizations and a lot of practitioners and advisors and, uh, and even top producers in some cases will, will kind of forget about how important it is to continue to attract, engage. And then uh, what we mean by amaze is, do you put those extra special touches in? We've That's the most important part, by the yeah. way, Joe. In my opinion, and what you at Total Expert do the best is you help make the amazement, like attract, engage, hard, okay, but people have figured some of those things out. Yeah. But I think what you guys have built, and this is so important in what we're talking about, the part that, that will keep the lifetime value is the amazement part, amaze yeah. your customers. Well, I would, I would tell you, we've certainly got still a lot of uh, work to do. We've made progress here, but a lot of what fuels us as an organization uh, to, to help the brands that we work with is, is helping them achieve this. And I, I just think about how powerful it is uh, if you're in lending, you're a bank lender, mortgage lender, which, whichever side you're on, and you're serving the consumer. If, if you can become a lifelong partner to that consumer and they have loyalty, that means they're having a better outcome. They're having a better result. Mm -hmm. Right there, you're, you're delivering a lot of value to them, helping them make bit, better financial decisions, which is, which is a win-win. Not only do you grow as a company by, by building that trust, but the consumer ultimately wins as well. Because if you're really doing this at scale and at, at the depth that we both strive to, to help organizations get to, yes. you're going to deliver better outcomes for the consumer. You're going to help them make make choices at the right time and make decisions. So we, we look at this as a flywheel that never ends and you have to look at it at every point in the life cycle uh, and the experience, all the experiences, uh, how somebody views you on social, is your messaging consistent? What yeah. happens when they fill out an online application, right? We, we talk about that a lot. 
And all of those things add up to the trust that the consumer has or does not have with you and your brand, which dictates the loyalty that they're going to have. And loyalty is where the vast majority of value is in in the business, right? It's so important. And we're going to talk about that. There's going to be a key takeaway that Joe and I found a brand new perspective of looking at at, at customers for life that we're going to mention in a moment that is all about loyalty, but changing the perspective on loyalty to get to that lifetime value. So I'm really excited to, to, to get to that. Um, yeah, so, so let's talk about, let's talk about where do you start as yeah. an organization and you, you're going to be from the poll we looked at the audience today certainly is, I, I would say in a more advanced stage than some of the folks we talked to and have probably uh, done a lot of great things already to impact the trust and the loyalty. Uh, what we, what we look at is saying you always have to look at the entire customer journey yeah. and you have to really audit that journey. And what you're looking for are, are gaps, gaps where somebody fills out an application, but maybe you get back to them with follow-up only one time. Mm -hmm. But the reality is uh, if you only get back to them one time, you're leaving a huge portion of consumers uh, that will transact, but they'll end up transacting with somebody else. If you don't have a multifaceted strategy to communicate with those people. So there's gaps everywhere. Sometimes it's during the transaction where you're not communicating with the frequency and the, and the context that you should, or maybe your, your text communication and your email communications aren't in sync and aren't saying quite the same thing. So it's looking at each portion of, of the customer lifecycle and saying, what am I excelling at doing great at? Where are the opportunities for me to optimize, which almost always, by the way, you will find, at, regardless of where you're at, you will find opportunities to optimize. Uh, and what that means is I'm just filling in a gap somewhere where we're forgetting to communicate, we're doing it maybe inappropriately or ineffectively. And by filling in just some basic gaps many times, you're going you're gonna to elevate your game and you're going to drive, drive growth. So let's, let's zoom in let's, on yeah, this let's next one. Yeah, let's zoom in on those gaps real quick. So, so first of all, I think that, that slide, anyone that's on this call, um, that slide, you guys should absolutely analyze it. The one that just came before this, analyze it. Total Expert did a brilliant job showing all the places. And then they've, they've shown that where the gaps go. And this is a gap, right, where you acquire a lead, right? They're just a lead. They're not yet a client. You, you, you're, you're, you still maybe just barely spoke to them in any way. And so the way Sales Boomerang works with, with Total Expert in filling in this gap is when somebody's just someone you're kind of thinking that you can work with before you've spent time getting to know them, maybe even pulling credit on them, the gap that we fill here is the mortgage inquiry, right? You bought the lead, you barely contacted, maybe they didn't respond to anything, and all of a sudden they're back in the market looking for a mortgage. Boom, we f- that gap now gets filled. Oh, they're back in, the- I didn't reach them the first time, but they're back in the market, now I can reach out to them. That's yeah. a strategy. Yeah, and, and by the way, Alex, I, I, I wanna point out, and both you and I are in alignment on this, but today obviously our goal is we wanna deliver value to the audience regardless. Yeah. This is n- in no way is this a, a huge commercial for Total Expert or Sales Boomerang. Yes, we solve a lot of these things and we, right. we, we partner with great organizations, but more importantly, these are things that every organization should yeah. be doing regardless of whether you work for, with, with one of our companies or both of us or not at all. These are yeah. things that are critically important, right? And, and they really do make an impact. So I, I just wanted to point that out. Our, our goal is to give you what we believe and what we've learned from doing this for a long time to be really sound best practices. Would you agree 100%. with kind of that? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. What, whatever way you do this for yourself, we're going to give you the best practices that we see work and we track for, for hundreds of lenders. And um, we, we together uh, I have found this to be a proven method. And that's all we're here to do is just give, it, give everybody that sort of insight. Um, yeah, so, 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 so this first gap here, I think that we did a great, you did a great job on kind of diving in a little bit deeper on that and getting that, that data. So a lot of, if you want to really win uh, in the modern era, of lending, banking, mortgage, 
using data intelligently and then being able to drive action on that is, is critically important if you want to have scale to the business. And so I think this, this part uh, is, is stage one. Would you agree right. if you're doing an audit, you want to make sure you have that piece. And let's, let's zoom in on that next gap here. So that's from prospect to customer. Now you've spent some time, you've spoken to a customer, you've, you've pulled their credit, you've figured out what's best for them. Now you want to add a few more layers of intelligence, right? Again, a few more layers of data intelligence. You want to keep the mortgage inquiry because if they go back out to the market, you want to at least be there to offer them your service, amaze them, right? Say, hey, let me give you a second opinion before you make any final decisions, right? So that's one piece that stays from the original gap. Then you have two more things that you want to add in this stage. After they became a prospect and you spoke to them, you may want to find out if they're listing their home for sale too, because now you know where they live. You're for sure you know it's their home and not something they're renting. Um, so now you want to put that piece of intelligence on. And then, of course, if it's someone you pulled credit on and figured out that they weren't quite ready yet, you want to add a third piece, which is a credit improvement piece of information, right? So that if any of these three events happen, now you filled in that gap. Now you're back in front of them and you're amazing them and you're doing all the things you're supposed to do. So that fills in the second gap. And then we'll jump to the third gap, right? So lead, we filled in that gap from lead to prospect, from prospect to potential customer. And now we have a customer. Now we want them to be around forever. Um, and so you are putting in every possible piece of intelligence to keep you in front of your customer for them. That's I want to drill down. Sorry to interrupt you, buddy. No, no, you're good. I want to drill down on this just a, just a little bit and, and why yeah. this is important. It's not just uh, important because it's you, you understand what's going on in their world, but it's important in that it gives you um, a view of what is happening in real time so that when you do communicate with them, you can provide value. And ultimately, if you're able to provide value and be super relevant, uh, you're going to build more trust and you're, you're going to retain and have a higher level of customer loyalty. And so by having that intelligence and then using that intelligence to say, oh, okay, I know what's going on here. Uh, credit score improved. I should talk to them uh, about that happening and how we can help them buy that first home and the programs maybe that, that we have or maybe our expertise, or maybe I want to send them a guide. Hey, now that your credit score is obviously uh, where it needs to be, yeah. here's some of the things that you should know. So I can really hone in and zero in on relevant pieces of content now that, that are going to be impactful. Yes. And I think that's so cool about some of the things that, that we're working on together and we have worked on together is not just getting those insights, but then using that to better serve the customer is really cool to see that happening and, and see their level of engagement and response uh, increase with the quality of uh, the quality of the communication increasing, you see their engagement increasing. And that's been a lot of fun to see that happen. Yeah, I, I love I love the way you put that. And, and again, I think what really comes back into play in a big, big way is that education, because what you're going to hear us talk about at the end of this at the end of this presentation, guys and, and gals, everyone that's in the audience listening is that education becomes a planning session. Imagine planning the next loan with your customer. OK, that's that's what's coming towards the end of this. Imagine planning it using education, planning the next loan. And talk about loyalty, my goodness, right? And, and this is a perfect transition, Joe, to what we believe is yeah. one of the biggest takeaways and things you can learn from this particular conversation that we're having. We flipped the concept on its head. You and I talked about this, and we just, we just had this, this amazing like, epiphany, if you will, that everyone in the lending industry, right, you're all, and, and please throw this into chat if you agree. How many of you have said you want to own your customer? Okay, real quick. Put into chat. I'm not going to stop talking. I'm going to keep going. Throw in the chat. Make sure you're still listening. We want to make sure that you haven't got, got tired or fell asleep on us. How many of you have said that? Own the customer. Own the customer. Own, own the customer. Own the relationship for own sure. Own the relationship. Right? Which, yes. is, which is still partly, which is still true, right? Absolutely. But, but it's just looking at it with a different dimension and say, really what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to deliver such an incredible amount of value. I'm wanting to deliver such a great experience yes. and such a great outcome, helping them make a better decision on the type of loan, helping them think about home ownership and, and being strategic and using it as a vehicle for wealth building, whatever it is, really excelling above and beyond what they would normally get from just any average lender to that level of, wow, this 
person added so much value and they made me feel really special, right? Yes. When you're dealing with borrowers, are you making them feel significant? Are you making them feel important? Yes. And, and so, so, so what you're saying, Joe, here is this, and it's, it's, it's person. It's also organization. We, we want yes. the loan officer to be the star, but we want the organization to also yeah. be recognized yeah. yes, together. So here's the key. Ready? Write this down. If you're going to make any notes, instead of you owning the relationship, make the borrower feel like they own you, like they own the relationship. Yeah. So they can say, I got someone. Everybody ever heard the phrase, I got a guy? That's, that's what you want them and to say. About your spoken like somebody on the East Coast. That's, yeah, that's, that's super cool. relevant out there, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so that is a key perspective change. Yes, you yeah. still want to own the relationship, but you want them to feel like they own the relationship, right? That is even more important. Yeah. When, when you can refer a professional that yeah. you know is going to take really good care of whoever you refer them to and make them feel special, it makes you feel good right? Yes. And so how are you influencing that behavior to happen? And if, if you're doing some of the things that, that we talked about and are talking through and, and you're just really crushing it in terms of the experience, the, the relevance, the value that you're having, showing your, uh, your value as, as that advisor, as that financial partner, helping, helping them make better decisions and good decisions, they're going to have that level of, of reciprocity or they're going to feel that reciprocity need to reciprocate, right? Reciprocity. Yes. Yeah, no, it's, right, that's, that's exactly right. So that's, that's a big thing. So, so look, we just went through, you know, communication engagement. We looked at that, at that entire um, uh, view of, of where the gaps may be. We showed you a great strategy for filling in those gaps. Now let's talk about having a te tech enabled business model. Yeah. And, and Joe, um, we're going to start with this quote, which I think, is just brilliant, and and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the second part here. You're gonna this is your 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 show to drive here that's coming up. But I just so love the second part, and again, like you said, it's not a big commercial for Total Expert or Sales Boomerang, but what you, what you guys have done has made the second part so important, right? So everybody read the the first part, right? And it talks about automating things that are efficient, and it's and then it says if you automate inefficiencies, right? You've just magnified your inefficiencies. Yeah, we, we call that uh, just driving off the cliff faster, right? Yeah, we, that's we, it. Talk, <laughs> we talk about that in, in a team. If we're working, if you're, if you're working on optimizing the wrong things or the wrong behaviors, it's just going to push you in the wrong direction faster. And so yeah. I thought that was a really cool, cool slide that, uh, that we found that you found. And, and th this is the part where we talk about the fact that number one, uh, we both fundamentally believe in, in the, the vast majority of uh, organizations that we both partner with believe that the, the special sauce, really the, the people that are going to win in the future are going to successfully combine that human connection, that people side with modern technology. And they're going to have an orchestration yeah. that happens around the customer, but it's going to have tech and it's going to have the special touches that only a, a human being can provide. And it's that magic that's actually going to, to win, the, win the market in, in the future. And so as we think about it and think about you know, how do you set up a tech-enabled business model, what does that mean? And uh, a lot of times when we'll have conversation with just pure technologists, they think about, okay, well, how can we, how can we remove people out of the transaction and how can we put algorithms on all this data? And what, what I love about how we always collaborate is saying, you know what, you have to do those things, to, but, but only because you want to enhance your yes. team's ability to serve yes. the consumer, right? Yes. Exactly. It's not to replace the people side of the business. It's to optimize it. It's to allow them to focus on delivering better experiences, better communication, better value to the consumer. And so um, this is an example of uh, what we've talked about already in terms of best practices. So we, we have uh, collected and aggregated and continue to study what are the best practices for the entire customer journey? How many times should you be engaging? What, what are the data triggers? And you guys are, are at, at Sales Boomerang are masterful at understanding what are the data points that tell, help us tell a story uh, mm -hmm. and help us drive the journey. And then, of course, in we, 
we took focus on take the action taking part of it, but you guys have done a great job. And, and this is an example of a workflow that, uh, that we've put together uh, as just an example of some of the best practices that, that we do when, when we're really looking at, okay, I've audited my customer journey. Now I need to optimize it. Yes. And a lot of times you can, you can get a faster start with making progress if you kind of plug in some of these best practices already. That we've and, already and, let me, and let me mention something because we're going to jump into this other section here in just a second. But let me go back here for just a moment. And I, everyone is, has this, this fear about technology. And, and um, I think what you said, and I want to put an analogy around it. Think about automobiles, okay? When, when automobiles appeared, they didn't, you know, they carry human beings, right? They don't, and all of a sudden there's going to be autonomous vehicles and it's not replacing human. It's I'm actually, pretty, I'm pretty excited about that, by the way, it'll make I'm my very commute, commute into the office a lot more enjoyable. And, and for the kids, I, I can't come on autonomous before the kids turn 17. Let's go. <laughs> um, but what it's doing, think about this, everyone, the, the technology, which is this autonomous vehicle, what is it going to do? It's going to carry us humans to our destinations faster and with greater security. Right? So that's technology taking humans and connecting us to other humans faster and easier. That's right. what this is. That's, yeah. that's what we're talking about. It's not about replacing people. It's actually about empowering people and giving uh, yeah. the person, A, borrower, and B, loan officer, the ability to connect faster and for more relevant reasons and more securely. I think what, what all of us can, can learn as a takeaway from the last few months and, and 90 days ago or 120 days ago, whenever this whole thing started, I've lost yeah. track if none of us could have anticipated what we would be going through. But I think what it's proven is that people crave human connection. They crave interaction. Um, they, they crave the, those, those types of things, those types yes. of interactions and communications, right? And so um, a big part of being able to do this at scale involves, as we mentioned, uh, the best practices, uh, getting this tech enabled model set up so that not, you can't just go out to your sales organization and write out, here's what we're going to do, guys. Here are the things, okay? What you have to be able to do is put the framework in place, whether it's one technology or generally more common, it's going to be a stack, a technology stack that helps you say, here are the playbooks. We know this to be the best practice. These are the experiences we want to deliver and the value we want to deliver for our customer. Here's how we're going to do that. And, and the part we're on here is as part of that audit and parting, part of setting up a tech enabled business model is identifying those missing or ineffective uh, data integrations. So I've got to have the data flowing in from the right places to be able to get the insights yeah. and then be able to drive the action which if yes. we go to this next slide here, I'll speak for a, a little bit on, on, this, on this point here. So when I'm, when I'm going down the path of saying, I wanna optimize everything, I wanna have true customer loyalty and, and set my organization up to maximize uh, the loyalty we have with our customers and those relationships. So using data to drive customer outcomes is what, you should be looking at in terms of uh, connecting all of, of your different data sets, putting the integrations together, uh, getting in it real time interest rates, getting uh, real time notifications and a lot of the trigger alerts that we talk about. And what we look at is this data insights and in action. So this is another flywheel. I know we We've, uh, we're big on flywheels at Total Expert, but we just understand that it's generally a couple of simple things, simple concepts, but you have to connect them correctly and be able to drive, uh, get momentum, okay? And what we've learned is that uh, a lot of organizations, even when they connect the data, uh, they maybe don't have the ability to ga gather the insights that they need to, to have an intelligent view of what's going on with the consumer. And you guys help a lot with this, obviously, by, by bringing in insights and saying, okay, no, here's what's really happening. But the last part is the part that we see generally the most opportunity for uh, benefit. And that is, I've got my data, I've got insights, so I know what's happening now. How can I drive the outcome? How can I take action? How can I have uh, the person that needs to call that customer call them, text them? How can I make sure we put the right content in front of the, the consumer? How can I drive the outcome? So it's using 
those data, that data and integrations that you're bringing in and setting it up to, to all connect properly to drive the outcomes that you want. So yeah, and Joe, we, and I'm we call that a fly the next slide for you here. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, it's not, it's coming up blank. So I apologize for that. I was trying That's to get- That's all right, we can get it in the recap. I'll just read through really quickly. So we yeah. just broke down a few examples of the data insights and in action. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure why that slide's not showing up either, but um, yeah. on the data side, the examples of that, I already touched on a couple of them, uh, interest rates, mortgage increase, credit oh. scores, value, lo uh, life, um, uh, uh, loan to value, um, the equity in your home, so you're monitoring values, right? So insights, uh, I know certain behaviors that mean they're looking for that first home or they're looking to upgrade maybe, right? Yeah. Uh, exactly. I also know that, hey, it's time for them to remove PMI or we can lower their payment for them or maybe they would benefit, they've got kids going to college and maybe they benefit from tapping some of that equity. I and mean, we've seen the ability to harness and access equity in homes has been really important uh, recently in this year because it's, it's financial security for so many people. So, and then the action is I want to drive action. Uh, I want to set my my ecosystem, my stack up to be able to drive outcomes and take those actions and then be able to monitor it all. So um, setting the tech enabled business model up has these different elements in it. And you have to look at all of those things to really get the, the progress that, that is possible. So, and we've yeah. seen, we've seen organizations, I, I won't mention names because I know we didn't clear it with anybody before <laughs> today's call, but we have seen profound outcomes and results for organizations that have really committed uh, to delivering on some of these initiatives. And, and that's been exciting to see. So, yeah, no, this is, this is I fantastic. Think we're ready for, ready for our next uh, quick poll here. Yeah, I think so. Um, and let's jump into it right now. Um, let's go right into, here we go. So you guys going to have another poll. Are you preparing your borrower for the next best loan? Are you tell tell them what that means really quickly. One more time, Alex. Yeah, so look, so the next best loan is this. When, you, when you're working with someone and all of a sudden you've, you've pulled their credit, you've approved them for a loan, and, and you're getting ready to go to closing, you should be preparing them for what's coming next. This, by the way, from a psychological study, literally a psychologist that we work with for understanding why this doesn't happen. In the mortgage industry, why 85%, we'll show you the stat in a second, why 85% of your active borrowers will leave you every single year is because they have no clue what's next. The loan you, you've done for them, to them, to us silly consumers, which I was just a few years ago, a consumer had no clue what, what the mortgage industry is about. For me, I thought this is what a mortgage was. Joe, I don't know if I ever shared this with you. This is what I thought a mortgage was. A mortgage was, I buy a house, I live in it, I sell it, the money I make from this house, I then put towards my next house. That's all I ever thought a, a mortgage yeah. was. Yeah. And I come to find out there's all of these strategies for using your equity and, and being able to create you know, take cash out and HELOCs and all of the different cool things you can use your home for. Who I had no, no clue. All right. So here we go. Yeah. Are you preparing your borrower for the next best loan? I love that. So 50% of you said yes. 36% um, said no. And, and, and 14% said they're not sure what that means. Well, that's great. For those that don't know what it means, we're going to get into it. For those of you that are already doing it, we're about to show you a way that's going to make it much easier um, and, and, and make a lot more sense and give you that ability to educate. So here's the point, right? You just did this loan right here. You then say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, right? You start every conversation, by the way, with, and we'll talk about this in a second too, like what is the goal for this loan, right? So once you've known that, you did, you've done the loan, you say your next best loan is one of these options and you plan for it. You give them a destination. There's some really amazing things that happen in your life that you don't even realize that once you're given a destination, you're able to get there and you're actually looking forward to it and you expect the result with that destination. Currently, there's very few people giving you the borrower the next destination. So 85% of those active borrowers will leave you every single year. That's a stat. That's real. That's, that's something that Black Knight put on, put on screen in 2019. They did the stat backwards, Joe. If you remember, we talked about this. They said 15% of you will return, retain your active borrowers. Retain them, which means 85% of your active borrowers will not be retained. Let's give you the more heartfelt numbers so you can understand it, right? So... This is what the question you should be asking every single borrower. You as, as a lending institution should be, should, everyone on the team should know this question. When somebody walks into the door, calls, whatever happens, if it's referred to by your mother, you still say to the person that was referred, hey, what's your goal for this loan? Not, 
let's start. The lowest rates are in, uh, you know, conventional right now. I'm just making things up, right? Let's take you into that. No, stop, stop, stop. Time out, time out. Joe mentioned earlier, educate, 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 right? This is your chance. You've already attracted. You already engaged. You want to amaze? You educate. There's a, there's a, there's a real belief out there that you want to make good friends with people, right? You want to, you want to connect with someone, teach them something about themselves or teach them something new and they will instantly have more of a, of, of a connection to you. You so, want to be the guide, right? You want to be the guide. You want to be the financial Your call has partner. been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. What is that? Two, five, four, four, zero, five, zero, seven, nine. Huh. Somebody's right. getting some phone calls. We're about, we're about to be a call center, Joe. Um, we, we were. I, I don't know. Maybe this one of those, um, that, those Zoom bombers that was Zoom bombers. ready to drop in on us and we caught them. I don't know. So. That's right. And, we, and we're gonna, we were going to ask them. The first thing we were going to ask is, hey, what's your goal for this loan? What's, what's, your, what's your interest rate right now? We probably got some people <laughs> that can save you some money on the phone. So. That's right. So look, yeah. when you ask that question, this is another stat that everyone needs to understand. 79% of borrowers will move forward with the first lender they speak to. So guess what? It's your job to be the first, right? That's what you want to do. It is your goal to be the first. And how do you do it? You say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, this is your current loan right here, right? Then what, what needs to happen is there needs to be an identification of the next best loan at the moment that you do this one. Hey, when this when your rate goes from 3.875 to when 3 this happens, we're going to reach out to you and let you know. Yes. Is that, that's what you're saying, right? That's, that's exactly so right. You're saying, you're saying, hey, we got a loan today. And let me yes. tell you how we're going to we're going to stay connect, how we're going to help you moving forward. Okay? Yes. When some of these things change and happen, I'm going to reach out to you. That's at the next point where it really makes sense for you to refinance, look at moving up, tap your equity, whatever it is. So yeah. you're, you're really setting, I think what you're saying is you're setting the expectation with the consumer that, hey, I'm going to be your guide. I'm going to be right. your, your financial partner for life, but we're not going to talk about your whole life. We're going to talk about the next phase, okay? Right. I don't, I don't want to talk about if you're 27, we're not maybe going to talk to them about a reverse mortgage today. Okay? <laughs> yeah. We're going to, we're going to talk about what, what, what is moving up to that next home going to look like? Okay. What is moving up to the dream home going to look like? Or what does tapping some of that equity? So you're setting that stage. Yes. With the goal of being the first one to present that to them every time. And so you're setting the goal and you're asking questions like this, right? Stephen Covey says it best begin with the end in mind, right? Yeah. So you just finished something. And start again. Hey, Mary, would you prefer to reduce a term or a payment? What do you like? And she says, hey, I want to save money. You say, great. At that point, we'll call you. I think one of the cool things, the cool nuggets that I've taken away from some of the work we've done on this topic, and I know we don't have a poll set up for this. Maybe we should have. But I would encourage everyone listening and anyone that listens to this after the fact to, to ask yourself, how many, uh, if you're originators uh, on the phone, how many of you are as an organization, how do you have built into your process? Are you having that engagement, that communication with your customers saying, yeah. here's what's next, okay? Mm -hmm. here's, here's how we're gonna move forward. At the next point, it's gonna make sense for us to connect. Here's what that looks like, right? So I, yeah. I, I know a lot of organizations are not putting that step in there and setting the expectation of when it's gonna make sense to engage, sort of just planting that seed in their mind to say, when this happens, uh, here's, here's what we're going to do. So I think, I think it's a huge opportunity is my point. And let me drive this thing home because I know we're getting towards the end. I'm going to go back a few slides just to drive this exact point home right here. When you all plan your trips, you're, you put something into your GPS. Can something just randomly take you off track? Just like, just like hey, I was planning on going to, to Panera Bread for breakfast. Oh, look. I see a, a, a thrift shop I want to stop in first. No, like you have a purpose. So somebody to take you off that purpose is going to be very hard. The point is, if you set that destination with your borrowers, it's unlikely that if you make the, the right point that they're going to be like, eh, I made plans with this other group. I'm just going to go somewhere else. And if you don't set the destination and they don't have that outline for them, yes. the default is just random, right? Whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And look, and sometimes it's more than one option. So don't just think it's one best loan. It could be option one, two, or three, but you're setting that up. You're setting that expectation. And when one of these things comes to fruition first, you're reaching out. And so that 
right there, that wraps up our, our, our agenda pieces, right? We, we talked about communicating and engaging tech-enabled business. What happens to, your, you know, to schedule the next loan? And this takes us to our key takeaways, and then we'll j jump right into Q&A. Um, as as I, I've seen a lot of things pop up in chat and continue to be that active, but Joe, um, what should yeah, so so key takeaways, and I really look at these as just action items. And and if I'm listening on the other end, saying, okay, what can we do to drive value in our organization to improve, to grow, make progress? Okay, first of all, if you haven't audited your customer journey, make it a mission critical thing that you do. If you have, do it again because even the second and third times you go through it we always find more things, okay? Even customers that we've partnered with on this stuff for three, four years to where we've ran this exercise uh, every year or at least every other year maybe, you're finding things again that either miss, miss, you missed the first time or new opportunities. So audit that customer journey. And then number two is create an action plan based on gaps that you can fill. And best piece of advice I can give to everyone is do not get paralyzed by the sheer amount of things that you could do. Identify low hanging fruit things that you can take action on, that you can drive an outcome with in 90 days or less, yes. and then set the next 90 days. If you wanna set the whole year, set it but identify things that you can make an impact on. Far too many companies look at it and they're like, well, there's so many things here. This is a huge project and it requires massive change management, massive integrations. Okay, cut that out. Start focusing on improving one thing at a time and then build and compound uh, those those results, right? And I know we we agree and align on on that strategy. Most most definitely. What Joe is talking about, I'm reading a book about Netflix right now. And Joe, what you're saying right now, one of the things that made Netflix so amazing and still amazing, right? Continuing to, so many other streaming services came out. They're still on top. One of the things they do so often is exactly what you said: the customer journey. What are the customers doing inside our platform? And they analyze it on a monthly basis. And it's the one meeting, Joe. I don't know if you know this. It is the one meeting that the CEO is on every single time because he wants to understand what is happening inside a system. Yeah, Amazon, by the way, customer obsessed, the first obsessed. really uh, outwardly saying, hey, we're customer obsessed as our culture. And there's obviously tremendous, whether you agree with uh, the behemoth they've become or not, yeah. their ability to use data as it relates to the customer journey oh. and anticipating the outcomes that their customers are going to find valuable. It's, it's the best example, right? Best. And so you have to apply it to our space, uh, but it's that mindset that really that customer uh, obsessed mindset that really continues to, to drive it. Yeah. And so let me take uh, number three and four here. So the third key takeaway um, is, is what we talked about earlier, the epiphany that we had is, is instead of thinking about owning your customer, if your customer feels like they own you, you automatically own them, right? You automatically own that relationship because they got a guy, they got someone, they have a you know, person that they trust. That's what you want to do. Instead of trying to own them, let them feel and know they own you because they trust you and all the things you do for them. And then the final key takeaway, and then we'll jump right into Q&A here, is prepare your borrowers for the next loan. There are very few, many of you answered yes, but in all of our research and everyone we've spoken to, we see this a very small amount of time, very, very small amount of time that anyone is preparing anyone for the next loan. Typically, it's a celebration of the current loan. And then I hope you come back to me. That's the answer. I hope you come back to me. Yeah. And so we want you to prepare your, your borrowers for the next loan. Have a, have a plan, prepare, and then uh, take action on it, right? And right. so I, I know that's something that, that we both are, are very passionate about continuing to help uh, the, the folks that we've been very fortunate to work with and, and helping them make progress on those initiatives. For sure. So Brianna, did you want to jump in? I see you, I see you yeah. joined us. I'll jump into q and I did want to add, I know Netflix knows way too much about me. So I feel, <laughs> I feel the customer love. They're all listening love. <laughs> right now. Amazon and Netflix are listening right now somehow. So, yes. so Amazon, Netflix, Netflix, please recommend some good stuff to watch. Okay. We're running out of shows. Um, Perfect. Well, I did want to remind everyone that we do have the Q&A feature down at the bottom of the screen. You can still submit your questions, but I'll go ahead and jump into the several ones that we've gotten already. I'll open this up to you, Alex and Joe, so feel free to um, kind of pick which one of you guys want to answer it or both. 
The first one being, if there's one area that we can focus in on the next three to six months to have the biggest impact on our customer journey, where do you recommend we start? Joe? Yeah, so uh, we've spent a lot of time talking about this topic and it, the answer is it depends on where you are, okay, number one. So having a little bit deeper conversation, understanding what you've done already, what's in place um, would be the first question. And then based on that information, that would give, you, give me the ability to, or our team, one of our teams, the ability to answer that more intelligently. But a lot of times it's the, one of the lowest hanging fruit things that you can do is on the front end of, of the journey and plugging some of those gaps from a uh, understanding um, the, the loyalty side by looking first at how can I convert more of those people that have applied with me that uh, are just out getting mortgage inquiry. So looking at the kind of that nurture and conversion site on, on the first step. And then part two, I would say, is starting to use some, some basic data triggers and automation on your past customer portfolio uh, to be able to get intent and, and show where they're at uh, and just drive some basic journeys, some basic engagement marketing journeys, uh, which is not difficult stuff to execute. So taking that past customer database and you can slim it down if you want for people that were, you know, the last few years, last five years, whatever you want to do, and then setting up just some basic integration so, so that you can have uh, really a, a view of, what, of what's going to be relevant to them, right? What's happening. Great answer. Alex, and please feel free to no, expand I, on I that think, a little bit. I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it. I, I think adding anything else would take away from what you said, and I think it's perfect. In yeah. short, I think post-transaction, conversion of that customer, and then post-close, just some of the basic things that can be done to sort of level up on, on both ends, both pre-transaction, post-transaction. Yeah. Go ahead. I think that's great. And I did want to add, I know we've had several questions come in about the presentation. A lot of people loving the content you both provided. So did want to just note it now before the end, telling people that we will be sending out a recording of the webinar within 24 hours to everyone. So you can see the slides and go back through them um, along with their comments on them. Um, jumping into the next question, opening up to both of you, how do you prevent borrowers from shopping between LOs and other lending companies? How do you prevent borrowers from shopping between other between yeah. lenders? Well, I mean that's that's really what we've been talking about this whole yeah. time is is building that loyalty by amazing the customer, right? I mean that's kind of what we've been saying is is giving yeah. the giving the, the 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 customer the ability to feel like they own you, and then they won't shop around on you, right? Give them the amazement. Um, so I'll share I'll share really quickly what I have seen as a best practice from really what I consider to be some of the very best run teams and practitioners and, and companies, but they have a very, in, I, I want to say intense, but I want to say that lightly because it's not, um, it's not uh, the engagement that they use on that front end. It's intense in that it's very uh, meticulous. They've got different touch points. They're communicating multiple times that first week. They're sending value adding co value added content. It's intense in that it's very structured and specific. They have a, a process to do this and those actions are happening. Okay. They've got somebody on their team or them calling, checking in, texting. They've got that communication happening. They've also got on the other side, they've got email coming out to those people saying, here's how we add value. Here's how we're here for you. By the way, I'm here on the weekends if you need it, whatever it is, but they're multi-threading uh, that and it's very specific. It's not offensive and it's not sell, sell, sell. It's value, 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 value. And so it's not, hey, we've got a better rate. We can lock. So a lot of people think it's, I've got to sell my rate and I've got to close them. And actually so few of consumers, they understand, you got to be in the ballpark, but so few of consumers, if you really do a great job at showing value up front and having that multi-threaded, multi-channel uh, strategy to where you're engaging, engaging, engaging and adding value, they're not going to shop you as much on, on rate. You're the, the, one of the best producers I've ever seen uh, just crushes it with this. And he yeah. and his team orchestrate just this, this perfect sequence of touch points when that borrower first reaches out and they capture a ridiculously high number of the people that they do not get shopped and they don't always have the best pricing. So. Yeah. And, and look, and this goes right to the point of, of scheduling the next loan conversation. Like when you set the destination and you've done a great job in building that value, 
people, people like the path of least resistance. Let's be honest, right? We don't want to start from scratch. Do we feel like sending somebody our socials and our date of birth and all of our private information again? Not really. We're forced to because we didn't give them a reason to fall in love with us. So what Joe's saying is, is spot on. People are busier than they ever have been. I don't yeah. want to talk. Most people don't want to talk to four organizations. If you give them confidence that you're going to take care of them and look out for their best interests and give them a great outcome, a great result, then don't give them a reason to go somewhere else. Now, it's not, it's not always going to happen. That's why you have to be very methodical in how many interactions and touch points. It's more than you think, right? To really convert a high pro a high proportion of those people that initially engage, you have to touch them many more times than you would ever imagine. And a lot of people just like after two or three outreaches, they kind of lose interest. And that's, that's where things fall through the gaps. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are both um, great points, especially with the social security, not sharing it with everybody. Yeah. I, now that we're at the top, I might have asked one more question if that works for both of you and then wrap sure. up. Um, and that last question being kind of a, a good personal kind of example, which is we've had communications go out in the past that may have broken the trust with our borrowers. What's the best way to avoid that in the future? Yeah. Um, yeah so I think number one, there's, there's different scenarios where, where that can happen. I think having alignment between all your channels of communication the marketing side of the business and the sales side of the business, having alignment there where usually we see that happen is if there's three or four email systems, there's maybe a couple of different marketing systems and maybe a couple of different CRMs and you don't have any centralization. So you can't really truly orchestrate a consistent end to end experience if you've got all these kind of one offs. And so it's, there's trade-offs, right? Because not every organization is that going to be popular to say, we need to really try to centralize systems and centralize communication. It's not necessarily always going to be popular, but it, it just depends on what, what your goal is. And if your goal is to deliver the most consistent and the best experience, I really think that that is an important piece of it. You know, and, and what I'll add to that is it goes back to, to a couple of things that we talked about earlier with the Bill Gates quote, right? If you automate inefficiencies, you're just going to magnify those inefficiencies, number one. Yeah. Number two, if you don't have high quality data and understanding yeah. of that data, just having data alone means nothing. You want great data? Go talk to a big data company and they'll just give you great data. It's the purpose behind that data. Yeah. That's what's going to make the difference in what Joe is describing. Yeah. So to that point, Alex, I think the, the piece that I left out that's absolutely critical is using the data to drive those uh, in yes. that engagement. That's it. Okay. Even if it's you're prompting your, your team with outreach based on the data and data can be where they're at in the transaction uh, status updates, things like that. And it can also be uh, so many of the things that that sales boomerang does with uh, these, these indicators, these triggers and, and really giving an understanding. And so if you're using data to drive the, the different journeys, that's, that's usually uh, a very predictable way to to make sure you're delivering consistent experience. Yeah, yeah, data hygiene is key, definitely. I think that's all great feedback. I did want to say, I know we are, we've come to the end of the webinar. I wanted to first thank you, Joe and Alex, for joining us today. I think our audience really appreciated this information. Yeah, hey, thanks it. so much for, uh, for having us. Alex, my friend, great to be with you and uh, look forward to doing it again. Right back at you, Joe. Um, and as a reminder to all attendees, also wanted to thank you guys for joining us and let you all know that there will be a recording of the webinar again sent to you within 24 hours. But you can also check our Knowledge Center on housingwire.com. Feel free to go there and get a copy of the webinar there as well. So without further ado, wanted to say thank you to everyone and have a great day. All right. Take care, guys. Yeah.